Okay, this video is gonna show you how to use the online programmer for status, Step Audio's MIDI display. The first thing you wanna do is connect a MIDI device to your computer. This could be something as simple as the USB MIDI device we sell over at stepaudio.net. Or if you have an audio interface, those usually have MIDI connectors on them as well. Then connect the output of your MIDI device to the input on status. Next, open up Google's Chrome browser. If you don't already have Chrome installed, you'll need to go to Google to get it. Then navigate to stepaudio.net. Once you're there, click on the support page. From the support page, click Preset Programmer. On the Preset Programmer page, scroll down a bit, and under Choose a MIDI Device, you should see your MIDI device listed there. If you have more than one MIDI device connected, use the pull-down menu and select the one that's connected to status. If you don't see any MIDI devices there, you might need to enable MIDI on Chrome. To do so, click on the three dots in the upper right corner, then click on Settings. On the Settings page, click on Advanced, and then Privacy and Security. From there, click on Site Settings. Then scroll down, and you'll see MIDI devices. Make sure that MIDI devices are turned on. Then when Chrome asks you whether you want to allow stepaudio.net to use your MIDI devices, be sure to say allow. You should only have to do this once. So now back on the preset programmer page, if you've already created status presets, you can load them by clicking on choose file. In your downloads folder, you should see your different presets. And if you want to load one, click on it and hit open. We're going to create one from scratch today though. Next, you want to choose the preset number that you want to create. Anywhere from 1 to 128. Today we're going to create preset number 4. Now if you already have a preset 4 created on status and you wanted to load it, you could connect statuses out to the input on your computer and then click load from status but we're gonna to assume today that you have pedals connected to the output of status and leave this button alone. Next, create the name that's gonna display for this program. Each line can have up to eight characters. So we're gonna call this Tutorial Preset 4. Next, when status receives a program change, it can send out up to five new program changes all on different channels. That way you can call up different presets on different pedals in response to a single incoming program change. So using the pull-down menu, select between one and five program changes to send out. Today we're going to send out three. Now you'll see the information for the three program changes appear. At the top of each one, you can put in some custom information to remind yourself what device is connected. So for our first one, we have a Strymon timeline connected on channel two. So highlight that field. And for the timeline, we have a default preset of 4, and then a bypass preset of 5. So we want to select channel 2, because that's the channel the timeline is going to be listening on. Then we want to select the program number to send out to the timeline. You can type in a value, or you can use the arrows to select it. Now the reason we have bypass listed is because it's a good idea for each of your pedals to have a bypass program. That way if you don't want to use it for a particular preset, all you have to do is send that program change number to it and it'll turn itself off. In this case we want to use the timeline on this program, so we're going to send program change number 4. Also, when you adjust these program change numbers, status sends the values out to your pedals. That way you can hear the changes and see what's happening. If your pedal isn't responding, you might have to go into status' global settings and make it so that status passes program changes through, as well as control changes. Here's a link to a video that shows how to do that. For the second device, we have an eventide pitch factor. Again, the information we're putting in here is just to remind ourselves what's connected. So next, select the correct MIDI channel, in this case 3, and for this preset we're going to turn the pitch factor off, so we're going to select program change number 5 to send it on channel 3. 
Then for device number three, we have a Maris Hedra connected. And it uses channel four. So select the correct MIDI channel. And then select the program change to send. Because we're going to use the Hedra for this preset, we're going to send it program change number two on channel four. So now when status receives program change number four on MIDI channel 15, it's going to send out three different program changes. It'll send out program change four on channel two, program change five on channel three, and program change two on channel four. In addition, status can send out up to 16 additional control changes and notes in response to each incoming program change. This is so you can tweak individual parameters on your pedals. So using the pull-down menu, select the number of control changes you want to send. In this case, we'll send two. Now for each of the control changes, you can choose whether it's a control change or a note. And if you want to send a note, you can click on this table of MIDI note on values. And you can see exactly what number corresponds to what note. For example, middle C is 60. There's only a handful of pedals that use notes, so you probably don't have to worry about this. In addition, we have device-specific menus for most MIDI-enabled pedals. So we're going to use the timeline and click on device-specific. So under select brand, we'll choose Strymon. Select device, we'll use timeline. And then we can select any of the parameters, individual parameters that we want to modify. In this case, we're going to modify the mix level. Select the correct MIDI channel. In this case, it's channel two. And then using the slider, you can adjust that mix value. And while you're moving the slider, that value is going to get sent to your pedal. Again, you have to have allowed status to pass control changes through. If your pedal isn't responding, check out the video on how to adjust global settings. So we're going to use a mix value of 18. For our second control change, we're also going to go device specific, and we're going to choose Maris and the Hedra pitch shifter. And then again, we're going to use the mix value. And the Maris is on channel four for us. So then using the slider, select the value that you want. Now each time that status receives program change number four on channel 15, it's going to send out these two additional control changes to adjust the timeline and the hedra each time this preset's recalled. Status can also remap two incoming MIDI controllers. If you have additional controllers connected to your primary MIDI controller, like expression pedals, status lets you remap those individually for each program. That way you can use one expression pedal, and for different programs it can control different parameters on different pedals. If you don't have any additional MIDI controllers connected, you don't need to worry about this section. The incoming controller numbers are set at the Globals menu. So if you haven't already done that, you can click on the link and go to the Online Globals Programmer. Now for each of these two controllers, you have four options per program. The first is to pass through the information unchanged. So whatever your MIDI controller is sending is just going to get passed right through status and onto your devices. Second, you could block that controller for this particular program. Third, you can set a specific controller number. If you have the controller number on zero, that means it's going to pass it right through. But if you want to choose a specific controller number, here's where you can. You can either type it in or just use the arrows. Then you can select the controller output channel. So the controller is going to come into status on channel 15, but then we can output it on a different channel. So let's go back up to our device specific menu here and check that. And again, we'll use a Strymon timeline. In this case, we're going to remap the expression pedal to the timeline's delay time. Again, the timeline's on channel two. MIDI controllers have a maximum range of zero to 127. But many times you want to narrow that range just to focus on the coolest sounding part of the parameter. In this case, we want to just use some really fast delay times. 
So we set the lower limit at 100 and the upper limit at 120. And that way, when status receives the values between 0 and 127, it'll translate those values and limit them to the range of 100 to 120. That way, you can use your full expression pedal, but only focus on that coolest sounding part of the parameter. For our second controller, we're going to go device specific again. And in this case, we're going to control the hedra. And we'll control one of the pitch shifters. Again, it's on channel four. Then you can move the slider and set the lower limit and the upper limit. Well, if you set the lower limit higher than the upper limit, you actually invert the expression pedal. So when status receives value zero, it's gonna output value 96. And when it receives value 127, it's gonna output value 55. Because with some parameters, it makes more sense to press down the expression pedal to get a lower number than a higher number. Status makes that easy to do. Next, we select the MIDI clock source. If you have an external clock, you can simply select external clock and status will pass that clock through to your pedals. If you want to use status's internal MIDI clock, there's three options. The first is last tempo. That means whatever tempo was used on the last program before it got to the new program is going to remain. But if you want to have a separate tempo stored for a program, you can select either auto start or manual start. With manual start, the clock won't start flowing until you use our external controller and press the start button or start it using the button on top of status. So in most cases, you'll want that clock to start right away when you select the program. So choose auto start. Then you choose your MIDI clock tempo, anywhere from 24 beats a minute up to 300 beats a minute. Again, you can type this value in, or you can use the arrow keys. So now when status receives program change number four, it's going to automatically start sending out MIDI clock at 226.1 beats a minute. This will let you synchronize all your downstream pedals that respond to MIDI clock, and at this point there's hundreds of pedals that do that. That way your delays and phasers and flangers and sequencers are all in sync. Finally, if you use Status' external tempo control switch, you can select the tap ratio for the tap button. If you choose quarter note, then the MIDI clock tempo is the same as the time between your two taps. If you choose eighth note, the outgoing clock will be twice as fast as you tap. Sixteenth note, four times as fast. So choose the ratio that makes the most sense for your song. Now when you're all done, you hit Send Preset. Status immediately displays the new program name, and the online programmer asks you if you want to save this preset. You can use the name that's automatically generated, or you can type in your own name. And then hit Save to Computer. Now again, this preset saved in your downloads. We can go check if you hit choose file. There it is. So that's how you create presets using Status' online preset programmer. Again, be sure to check out the video on how to set up your global settings to get the most out of Status. There's lots more information and a complete owner's manual over at stepaudio.net.